welcome again to this particular session and after having completed section 2 moving over to section 3 and as I told you while leaving the last session that this particular section happens to be pretty strong formidable and needless to add requires a bit of what we call extra caution extra motivation and of course extra dedication to comprehend the intricacies of this topic so let's go and try to understand what exactly list price catalog price and why this concept see actually so far as i told you while leaving the last session that we were talking about one important fact that invoice price and selling price is same that mean at whatever price head office sends goes to head of, uh, branch office the branch is expected to do the sale at that price continuing what we were doing so far suppose Head office in the current year sends goods costing rupees 100 and it adds a margin of 25. That means head office knows that cost price is 100 but it adds a margin of 25 and let us say invoices the goods at the rate of 125. Obviously branch when will receive the goods will think that uh, this is the cost price. Honestly speaking, even the branch knows that this is not the correct cost price because only thing is that branch will groove in the dark and branch will never ever come to know what exactly is the cost price. In fact, this sort of technique or invoicing technique is adopted as I told you earlier that we do not want to reveal the real profit earned by the head office because we always have an internal fear that if branch will come to know about the real profit chances are there that branch manager might start a competitive business so in order to hide the real profit made by the organization we adopt this technique of sending the goods at invoice price now let us say in the current year we have sent goods costing handed at an invoice price of 125 indirectly we are asking our branch manager to sell the goods at 125 now you just think for a while suppose branch is selling these goods at 150 to a particular customer to another customer at 140 to another customer at 130 to another customer at 160 and branch might tell us that we have sold the goods only at the rate of 125 even though they might have sold the goods at 160 150 140 to different customer the drawback of this system the system which we have had done so far correct invoicing i'm talking about the major drawback of this particular system is that here branch has got every chance to actually manipulate the things they may charge different price from different customer and may simply tell to us that we have sold the goods what we call at the rate of 125 for example if branch has sold the goods for 160 because we had asked them to sell the goods at 125 so branch will not reveal a profit of 35,000 to us and they can keep that particular profit in their pocket and moreover head office quite surely is not having any sort of means to know the real sale incurred by the branch. So this is the drawback associated with what we call invoice price number one that we branch can sell the goods at a price higher than invoice price and might tell to the head office that we are selling the goods at what we call 125. Another drawback is that if branch is going to sell to different customers at different prices, then quite obviously the different customer might complain to the head office that your branch is charging different prices. So again, it can spoil the image of the entire organization. So that is the reason these are the two major drawbacks. And in order to curve and control these drawbacks, we resort to the concept of list price and list price and catalog price are one and same thing and this is nothing but it is the printed price for example now what head office will tell head office will tell okay we are sending the goods cost price at a margin of let us say 25 invoice price is 125 no doubt about that but at the same time we have printed a price that is known as list price or catalog price let us say printed price is 150 indirectly what we are trying to tell this time to the branch manager sell the goods at this particular price so because the goods because the price of the goods is printed so this time branch will not have what we call any sort of means to manipulate the things so this is how we can what we call exercise control over the malpractices which might be adopted by some of the branches so that is the reason why this concept has been invented is it clear to you i'm not talking about invented that means invented invented means to start so once you have got the background story of this particular concept, now we moved over to the next part. Now, 
the questions of list price and cost price, as I told you a moment ago, are a bit difficult to comprehend, but not tough at the same. A bit difficult to comprehend, but at the same time, but if at the same time we have a solid backgrounding and solid what we call conceptual knowledge, it becomes almost like a walk in the park, as I keep on telling. So, first you try to understand 3.1. In fact, section 3, we are starting try to actually understand this question. First of all, Mr. Ever Young of Hotland invoices goods through the branch at Toyland at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 100%. This time, lines will be very strong, wordings will be very strong. You have to pay extraordinary attention, unwavering attention. Head office is sending the goods to the branch at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 100%, which is cost plus 100%. That means list price is cost plus 100%. List price is cost plus 100% and goods are being sent to the branch at 20% less than the list price. So first thing first, you need to be very careful in this case. See here, because I will need a bit of space in this case. First of all, your first target should be to analyze the rates and once you become deft in it then as i told you things will be quite easier for you analysis of rates analysis of rates once again we go through that particular line goods are sent to the branch at 20 percent less than the list price which is which is means list price which is cost plus hundred percent which is cost plus hundred percent now in this question what you do first of all you simply write suppose your cost price happens to be hundred suppose your cost price is hundred you first add hundred percent to it because it is written that your list price is hundred percent of cost price which is 100% of cost price. So add 100%. 100% will be 100. So at least we can say that if cost price is 200, then list price is 200. List price or catalog price are one and same thing. Correct? So list price or catalog price is 200. Now, again go through that line. Goods are being sent at 20% less than the list price. Goods are being sent at 20% less than the list price. Now list price is 200, subtract 20% of it because it is written that goods are sent at 20% less than the list price. So 20% of 200 will be equal to 40 and your, this price is nothing but your invoice price. So now you have analyzed the rates in a threadbare analysis manner, invoice price. At least now you know that we are talking about in this particular question three types of prices. One is cost price, another one is list price, and third one is invoice price. Correct? Once you have made an analysis of the opening statement, now you will have to do some further analysis. What is what I mean by further analysis? See here. I will write in one column cost price. I know that cost price is 100. Then I write in the second column, invoice price, invoice price, IP. Invoice price is 160. At this price, we are sending the goods that is 20% less than the list price. And there is another price that is list price, which is 200, that is printed price or catalog price. Correct? Now what I am going to do, I will take the difference of cost price and invoice price. The difference of, and most of the time we always take the difference of cost price and invoice price. So similar to that, hundred. the difference between these two is 60. We know that difference is 60. So I write 60 in the numerator and in the denominator I write invoice price. Okay, I will shorten it out also. 0, 0 cancel, 3 by 8. In the denominator, what you have written? In the denominator, you have written invoice price. At least one thing should be absolutely clear to you that this is rate of margin on invoice price because in the denominator, we have written invoice price. Try to understand another important point. Because in the denominator, 
you have written invoice price i will call it rate of margin or rate of loading whatever you may like to write rate of margin on invoice price no doubt about that this is rate of margin on invoice price number one because in the denominator you have written invoice price this rate can be applied to an item which is at invoice price don't let it skip out of your memory this is the rate on invoice price so you cannot use it on an item which is at list price or which is at cost price you can use this item only to a transaction which is at invoice price number one when you are going to apply this particular rate what will happen what will be the replication what will be the consequence the replication or the consequence will be that item will get converted into cost price because we have taken the difference between the invoice price and cost price first of all you need to understand this in this manner correct so this is known as rate of margin on invoice price and it can be applied only on invoice price and if i am going to apply it to an item which is at invoice price it will get reduced to cost price this is the advantage of using this particular rate and we have used only this rate 99.9 percent .9 in the previous section and previous to that one correct now this is one part of the game now i take the difference between invoice price and list price the difference between invoice price and list price is how much it is 40 because we have taken the difference between invoice price and list price and in the denominator now i am writing list price i will shorten it up it will be equal to 1 by 5 in the denominator what you have written in the denominator you have written list price or invoice price so we have written list price so quite obviously it can be termed again as rate of margin it can be termed as rate of margin on list price late rate of margin on list price now if this is the rate on list price it can be used only towards an item which is at list price you cannot use this rate to a transaction or to an item which is at either cost or at invoice price. You can use this rate over an item which is at list price only. Now, if you are going to use this item, this rate on an item which is at list price, what will be the consequence now think by yourself? That item will fall down to invoice price because this time we have taken the difference between the invoice price and the list price. You got my point or not? So you have seen that in this particular scenario, we have already derived two rates. Number one, and a third rate can also be derived. So third rate, yes, even a third rate can be derived. Third rate basically will reflect the difference between cost price and list price. This is your third rate. Now, if I take the difference between cost price and list price, the difference comes to 100. The difference comes to 100, correct? And in the denominator, if I write list price, which happens to be 200, now you let me know, what should I say about this particular rate? This is rate of margin. This is rate of margin, no doubt about that. Because in the denominator we have written list price, again it will be called rate of margin on list price. But this rate can be used on an, this rate can be used again on an item which is at list price. But now, if I am going to apply this rate on an item of list price, that will get converted to cost price. You need to understand this. If I am going to apply this rate on an item which is at list price, then list price item will come back to invoice price. If I am going to use this rate that is 1 by 2 on an item which is at list price, that will come back to cost price because this time we have taken the difference between cost price and list price. I hope you got a fair bit of idea regarding these rates. Complex question, very tough question, but you need, need to become deft in it. So once you have become deft in it, correct, now we move a bit further. Now the question says that, First of all, again, I will go through the question. Head office sends goods to branch at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 100%. We have analyzed till up to this point. Now, further, the question state, states, with the instruction to sell the goods to customers on cash at invoice price, 
and on credit at list price. Now in question, there is some further movement. Correct? There is further movement. Further movement regarding some directions. The directions are that head office has told to branch that if you will incur cash sales, then you will do the cash sales at invoice price. But if you are going to sell the goods on credit, then you will have to sell the goods at list price. At list price. So these are the directions. Cash sales will be done at invoice price, but credit sales will be done at list price. Correct? From the following details, prepare branch stock account, branch adjustment account, branch debtors account, branch profit and loss account. So now we have to prepare the account. In order to prepare the account, first of all, just allow me a second because otherwise the things will become difficult. Okay, this is the line I have stressed. I'm framing branch stock account along with me. You also start framing because it's an important question. It is better if you would note down. You can see that this time branch stock account is pretty long one, correct? And then I will prepare branch adjustment account. In this question, even branch adjustment account will need a bit of a space. So that is why I am preparing a bit longer than the usual one. Besides that, we will also prepare branch profit or loss account. I already told you it's a pretty long question. This is your branch profit or loss account. I think this is more than enough. And we also prepare branch debtors account. Branch debtors account, correct? Branch debtors account. A bit of time actually goes while preparing these accounts. is happening this is the problem sometimes you know pen gets stuck these are electronic pens and that is why a bit of problem arises while writing and while framing even the structure of the account. I think we have prepared all the accounts. And in case if I would need any other account, in case if I would need any other account, I will prepare a separate account for that, correct? Now we come back to the question. Very interesting, very strong question. So you have actually seen in this question, I hope you have also understood the concept and the logic behind what we call keeping the list price or Catalog price number one. You can also see that this time we have three types of rates. One rate is to convert invoice price to cost price. In fact, again, we would use this rate to the maximum extent. And uh, besides, in this particular question, we have rate of list price to convert list price to invoice price. And there is another rate. Again, this rate is on list price that is 100 by 200 or 1 by 2. But if I am going to apply this rate to an item which is at list price, that will get converted to cost price. These are the important facets of this particular, what we call uh, rates. Now, another direction of the question is that cash price need to be incurred at invoice price, uh, while the credit sales need to be done at list price, correct? So after familiarizing ourselves with all these things, now we move over to the concept. But very important, Unless and until otherwise stated, always presume items related to goods at invoice price. For example, in this particular question, we have written a stock. Now, nothing is written before, written whether it is at invoice price or cost price. I will presume it at invoice price, branch stock account. This is your branch stock account. This is your branch adjustment account. 
and I will also put the heading to branch PL account, branch profit and loss account, and finally branch debtors account. So now we can start the question. Opening stock is 18,000. Now let me know whether it is at invoice price or whether it is at cost price or whether it is at list price. Sir, invoice price, right? Absolutely. So here I am going to write opening stock opening stock 18,000 if it is at invoice price because branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price don't let it skip out of your memory if it is at invoice price quite obviously I will have to take the loading out I will move over to the what we call credit side of the branch adjustment I will write load I will write opening stock I will write 12,000 I will write the rate Basic purpose of branch adjustment account is to bring the item to the cost. Now, this item is at invoice price. I want to bring it to the cost, quite obviously, because in the question, I mean, in this particular case, I want to bring the item to invo from invoice price to cost price. So, we are talking about cost price and invoice price, and I will have to apply this rate, 3 by 8, to bring the item to the cost price. Correct? So, 3 by 8 is the item which I will write here 3 by 8 so what will be the loading 12,000 into 3 divided by 8 that is item is 12,000 or how, how much 63 by 8 right it is and balance brought down is 18,000 I have written 12,000 So, 18,000 into 3 divided by 8, that is equal to 6750. This is your loading. You have applied your normal rate of invoice, correct? Because this item is at invoice price and the purpose of branch adjustment account is to bring the item to the cost price. Now, daters in the beginning is given to you. We move over to the daters account and write over there balance brought down as 10,000. So, this is 10,000. Now, after that, we have next item. In this case, computers in the beginnings. Computer. Now, computer is an asset. Correct? Because it is an asset, in case, if ever in the question it is given under second method. Correct? If ever it is given any asset, computer, furniture, building, plant, whatever it is. In that case, I would advise you to prepare a separate account for the same for example computer account and in the computer account you simply write balance brought down the balance I think was 50,000 so I will simply write 50,000 leave it as it is at this moment what I will what I have to do rest I will let you know later on then we have goods received at invoice price so many times I have told you whenever in the question there are goods it is written that goods received always check whether there is goods in transit or not in this question there is goods in transit you can see later on correct goods in transit on the last day is 10,000 so because in this question branch has received 180,000 worth of goods and 10,000 worth of goods are still in transit it means head office must have sent 190,000 worth of goods so that is the reason when you will write in the branch account you will have to write it this way goods sent to branch First, you will write received. Received is 180,000. Then add goods in transit first. Goods in transit is 10,000. So, 190,000 worth of goods head office must have had sent. Number one. <laughs> Total goods must have been sent 190,000. Now, you take the loading of these goods right here. Goods sent to branch account write 190000 take the loading 3 by 8 these are at invoice price so 190000 190000 into 3 divided by 8 is equal to 71250 so 71250 is your loading no doubt about that now once you have written goods in transit here the basic purpose is to reflect how many goods we must have sent in the current year to the branch? We have achieved that target. But ultimately, we have to show 
what amount of goods have been received by the branch. So that is the reason I will have to present goods in transit towards the credit side also. So goods in transit towards the credit side, I will write 10,000. But never make this mistake of writing directly 180. It could spoil your marks. On the debit side of branch adjustment account load, goods in transit, 10,000, that is invoice price, into 3 by 8. Correct, I will have to convert it to cost. So 10,000 into 3 divided by 8, that is 3,750. 3,750. So far, so good. And now... There are cash sales and credit sales. So first I will write cash sales here. In this question, cash sales is equal to 82,000. So I will write here cash sales 82. And then there is credit sales. Credit sales is equal to 1,20,000. I will write here 1,20,000. Correct? Now, credit sales is also written in the branch debtors account as you know better than I. So, I will write here credit sales. Amount of credit sales is how much? Amount of credit sales is 1,20,000. So, you will write here 1,20,000. This is your credit sales. Now, we have written cash sales, credit sales, goods in transit also. Cash sent to branch for expenses. Cash sent to branch for expenses. Actually, you need not require to prepare expenses account. But just to make the point a little bit more clearer, I also prepare expenses account. Just to make the things a little bit more clearer. Actually, under data system, under first system, Whatever cash is sent by head office to the branch to, for expenses, we put it towards the debit side of the branch account. But under this system, under stock and data system, head office has sent cash worth rupees 32,000. First, I will write expenses account debit to cash account. And just below it, just pay attention, just below it, it is written actual expenses. Actual expenses are actually 30,000. So, actual expenses are reflected in the PL account under this system. How much we spent? I will write here by PL. It means actual amount is spent. Actual amount is spent. So, actual amount is spent actually is 30,000. So, under this system, how much we have spent that is reflected. And you can write here balance carried down. You write the title of the account as cash for expenses. So, it's still 2000 worth of cash is remaining. We are not concerned with that cash which is remaining, but we are concerned with 30,000. The amount is spent. The amount is spent will be reflected in the branch PL account. Is it clear to you or not? So, in the branch PL account, I will write expenses that is equal to 30,000. Correct. Another important point. Now, stock at the end is given to you 16,000. So, closing stock, I will write here, balance carried down. That is closing stock. Closing stock is 16,000. So, I will write here 16,000. I will move over to the debit side of branch adjustment account. Over there, I am going to write loading on closing stock. Now, closing stock is 16,000. So, 16,000 into 3 by 8, 2,000 into 3, 6,000 will be your loading. Correct? Now, the next item is bad debts written of 400. We know about this particular treatment quite well. So, bad debts 400 will put towards the credit side of the branch debtors account. Bad debts. 400. I will write here 400. And again, I will move over to the branch profit and loss account. In the branch profit and loss account, I am going to write branch debtors. Or I can simply write bad debts. Bad debts is 400. 
Now the next item is in this particular case goods returned directly by customer to the head office. Goods returned directly by customer to head office. Whenever it is written goods returned by customer it always means Goods have been returned by customer to branch, but this time goods have been returned by customer to the head office. In fact, when I was discussing the stock and data system over there also, I had had actually talked about this particular point, but still if some of you might have forgotten, just pay attention. Goods returned, goods returned. by customer by customers to head office so sometime actually goods are always sold by the branch to the customer but sometime it happens actually customer instead of returning them to actually branch office they may return it directly to the head office that is exactly the case here so whenever such a situation arises in the question what you have to do what you have to do, you segregate this particular transaction into two parts. What I mean to say, see here, so many times I have told you there are three parties which are involved in the entire branch accounting. One is head office, another one is branch office and finally the customers. These are the three parties around which entire chapter revolves. If it would have been written that customers have returned goods to branch office, no problem would have arised. Correct? Because in that case, it would have been treated as sales return. And we know the treatment of sales return. That sales return is once written towards the credit side of debtor's account. Isn't it or not? Credit side of debtor's account. And it is also written towards the debit side of branch stock account. If it would have been returned, goods have been returned by customer to branch office, then no problem would have arisen. However, this time, question has stated that customers have directly returned the goods to the head office. This is the problem. So, in order to overcome this problem, what you have to do, just imagine as if customer have returned the goods to branch. First, you have to imagine it in this manner. Correct? Now you let me know, if customer would return the goods to branch office, what will be the treatment? As I just told you, if customer returns the goods, then what we do, we simply write it as sales returns, once in the branch account, sorry, branch debtors account, and secondly, in the branch stock account. Isn't it or not? 1,500. This is one part of the game. Correct? Now, even though goods have been returned by customer to head office, I told you in order to solve this one, first you imagine as if goods have been returned by customer to branch, number one. And number two, now you, re, now you imagine again that branch has returned the goods back to head office. That means you are presuming customer have returned the goods to branch office and branch is now returning to the head office. But remember one thing, when branch will return the goods to the head office, it is treated as goods sent to branch returns. Don't let it skip out of your memory. Correct? And we know that goods sent to branch account is written once towards the credit side of branch stock account. And then we also take the loading of this one and loading is written in the branch adjustment account. Isn't it or not? So this is how you will have to deal with such transaction. Whenever in the question it is given that customers have returned the goods directly to the head office, you have to break the transaction into two parts and then you do the treatment. So this part we have done. Now we will do this one. Now we will presume that branch has returned the goods back to the head office so in the branch stock account what i will do i will write good send to branch account i will write good send to branch account i will write here returns 
1500 and now I will take the loading also now I will take the loading also and I will write here loading on goods sent to branch account returns now you let me know what rate or which rate should I consider in this case now this is the most formidable part because I told you this is pretty tough question and not easy to tackle see here in this particular case branch must have sold the goods to the customer that line is a clue itself that branch must have sold goods to these customers on credit quite obviously because these customers are returning the goods because generally when we sell the goods to the customers on credit they are offered an option that in case the goods do not come up to your expectation you have the liberty to actually return it back so branch customer that means these are credit customers and remember one thing remember one thing this is very important credit sales as per the questions are at list price in the opening line itself and we also analyzed that it is it was written that branch is supposed to do the credit sales at list price so that mean when branch is returning the goods the goods sent to branch returns are at list price are at list price is it clear to you or not so these are at list price just to make the point a little bit more clear for you i will write in bracket list price number one list price and the basic target of branch adjustment account is to bring the item to the cost price so what is your intention now what you want to do now first ask the question to yourself the problem with you is that item is at list price you want to bring it to the cost price which are the two prices figuring in your analysis one is cost price another one is list price you want to convert list price to cost price look into the what we call rates where is cost price written here it is where is list price written here it is 200 and what what is the difference between these 200 so that means you will have to use this rate because when you will apply this rate to an item at list price that item will get converted into cost price that is the reason why here when i will take the loading i will apply the rate i will apply the rate one by two that is hundred by two hundred so i will write here 750 i will write here 750 is it clear to you this is most important facet and last we and before that so item has been converted so whenever it is given in the question that goods have been returned by what we call customer directly to the head office first treat them as sales return and never ever the loading of sales return is done remember one thing and then you treat them as if these goods have been returned by branch to club branch to head office that is you treat them as good sent to branch returns now daters at the end 8100 is given to you so i will write daters balance carried down 8100 8100 and now we have been given at the end that depreciation on computer is 20 percent actually i need not require to prepare computer account but just to make you understand now there is depreciation depreciation on computer i will write depreciation depreciation 10 percent or 20 percent i think it was 20 percent so 20 percent 10,000. and finally i will write the balance carried down balance carried down is 40,000. i am not bothered about what we call closing balances what I am bothered about is the depreciation because depreciation is an expense. It will get posted to the debit side of what we call branch payroll. So if you have seen the question very closely, you must have realized actually there was no need for you to prepare the um, computer account and even cash for expenses account. That means actual expenses will be put in the PL and depreciation on asset will be put in the PL. That's all. So I will write here depreciation on computer depreciation on computer so i could have written it directly depreciation on computer is ten thousand correct actual expenses we have already written now it seems the question is over and to some of you might appear a bit easier but it is not as easy as it looks 
and if it is appearing easy it is because of the fact that you are well versed with the rates now once you become deft in it then definitely it will be easier but two three points are still remaining to be discussed i have told you so many times that this particular account is always prepared at invoice price branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price the first major question which should come to your mind sir if this account is prepared at invoice price we have written this item at list price here yes this is a very good question logically if i am preparing this account at invoice price how the hell in the world actually i could write here at list price an item 1500 goods sent to branch account actually even though i have written goods sent to branch returns 1500 towards the credit side if you will look more closely you will find actually i haven't done or committed any mistake because on the opposite side i have written sales return and both these items are one and same thing so their impact is getting neutralized so it is not affecting the what we call methodology of preparing this account at invoice price i hope you got this particular point even though this item is at list price but here i have written sales return remember one thing both these items are one and same thing isn't it or not so this item is also list price so that is why their impact is getting neutralized number one and number two very important which if you would forget then your entire solution will be wrong correct and all your efforts would go in vain so in this particular case you must pay attention towards the opening lines the opening lines there was a direction regarding the sales and in most of the questions of list price and catalog price you are going to face the slides cash sales was supposed to be done at invoice price and credit sales was supposed to be done at list price so here this is another important point your credit sale is list price and you have to prepare this account at invoice price so what you have to do somehow you will have to bring this item credit sales item which is at list price to invoice price now we look into the what we call our chart and because in our analysis we have concluded that we have to bring the item of list price to the invoice price i look here list price and invoice price so it means i will have to apply this rate one by five if i am going to apply this rate to an item at list price that will get converted into invoice price so i will write here on the opposite side on the opposite side i will write and we never write loading on credit sale but that doesn't look good in fact we write this in this manner excess of excess of credits excess of list price excess of list price over invoice price excess of list price because these items have been sold in excess of invoice price so what is the amount of excess you can easily find out 1,20,000 into the rate is 1 by 5 so that is 24,000 now branch will feel that it is a sort of injustice for them reason being is that they worked hard they sold the goods at 120 and they may feel that our efforts has been brought down by reducing the amount of sales so that is the reason this excess is after you have written it to the debit side is written also to the credit side of branch adjustment account after all it is a gain to you excess of list price over excess of list price over invoice price and 24,000 will be the amount. 24,000. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the point. These two points are very, very vital. That credit sales, once you are going to write over there, bring it to the, what we call invoice price. First, in order to bring it to invoice price, we will have to reduce the sales. It, we are not actually reducing, but we are taking the excess part away by putting this item towards the debit side. But ultimately, it is a gain to us. So that is why we will have to take it to the credit side of the branch adjustment account. This is how you will have to solve this question of list price. Very important, very important. And now we can close it down. So in this question, if I'm going to close it down, according to the solution which you are having at your disposal, we have, in this case, 
I think shortage to the extent of 4,000. Right, we are having a shortage of 4,000. So I will tally it up now. And I will write here shortage. Shortage or spoilage or deficiency, whatever you may like to write. That is 4,000. Because this entire account is prepared at invoice price, quite obviously this item shortage it at, is at invoice price. I will write here loading on shortage. Loading on shortage. In order to extract the loading, I will write 4,000 and I will use the rate 3 by 8. 3 by 8. I think it is 1,500 or something like this. 4,000 into 3 divided by 8, right, 1,500. So shortage, loading, 1,500 and shortage at cost will also be presented towards the debit side of PNL. Shortage at cost. So 4,000 minus 1,500, 2,500, you will write it over here. Rest of the things now you can do it off your own. All you have to do is to now compute your gross profit. Gross profit according to your solution, I think is 90,000. Let me check. Right, it is 90,000. So 90,000 is your gross profit. You will take the gross profit to the credit side or branch PL. You will write gross profit 90. And then now you are going to compute your net profit, which again I think 47,100, which is 47,100. 47,100 is your net profit. And you can prepare your branch data's account to get the figure of cash receipt from data's. You will get cash received from data's. Cash from daters is equal to 1,20,000. Very interesting question, isn't it or not? So, this question you should be in a position to understand now at least and after having gone through this particular question, you need to do the next question of your own because next question is absolutely, absolutely on similar lines to the one which we have done. 3.2. See, same thing. R777 Enterprise invoices goods to its branch located at City Magnum at 20% less than the list price. Uh, and list price, I've already told you, is also known as catalog price, which is cost plus 50%. Now, the only difference is uh, that when you begin, you must write cost 100, add 50% to it. 150, you will get the list price. Then 20% of 150, you pick up 30. So 120 will become your invoice price. From the following details, prepare all these accounts. So stock in the beginning is given. Daters in the beginning, branch furniture, you know the treatment. If you want to prepare furniture account, well and good. Otherwise, you can simply take the depreciation to the PL. Cash sales, credit sales is given. Because credit sales is given, you have to be alert that credit sales are at list price. Again, even in this question. Goods invoice to branch and all. Okay, first you try to do it off your own and in case if you are able to do it, that's fine. Otherwise, I will do it for you in the next session. Correct? So, in this session, we have just discussed the concept and did one question, but in the next question, we'll finish up this particular section. So, till then, it's time to say goodbye and good night both.